Warning, using these keyboard shortcuts will result in extreme productivity. Hi friends, if you're new here, my name is Cliff Weitzman. I'm the founder of Speechify. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the biggest misconceptions about how to use a computer. Things that are small, but can have a huge impact on your overall workflow. We're gonna talk about shortcuts that I use every single day. Using the computer without keyboard shortcuts is like walking to school when you can use a car. It takes a little bit of practice to learn how to use these, but once you learn them, your productivity goes through the roof. <laughs> if you wanna find all the documentation, for the keyboard shortcuts in this video, search Cliff Medium Shortcuts and you'll find an article here. All of my favorite keyboard shortcuts. So if you forget anything along this video, you'll remember it. We're gonna break this video into two sections. The first one is we're gonna talk about actual shortcuts and the second one we're gonna talk about apps that I use. One of the most useful shortcuts that most people don't know about is Command Control Shift 4. It lets you take a picture of your screen it doesn't take the entire screen, just the area that you select. And when you save it, it saves it to your clipboard, not to your desktop. That means that if I then wanna text it to somebody, I can do that very easily. From my clipboard, Command V, I just pasted it. The most useful keyboard shortcut there is out there. It lets you highlight any portion of the screen, save it to your clipboard, Command V to paste it. And usually I paste it into iMessage, email, or Slack. Next up, most people will like click here and then highlight. If I wanna highlight this paragraph, one, two, three, triple click and it's highlighted. Next up, okay, triple click and then shift click in order to highlight both paragraphs, Command C. Now I'm going to paste that in here. Let's say I wanted to move the cursor to right here to take. Some people would then need to use their, their mouse to do that, I don't. Um, I click option and then arrow and it lets me skip entire words. So then I can get to take very easily. Let's say I wanna highlight the portion of the sentence from where I am to the end of the paragraph. Normally you then you know, pick up your mouse and try to highlight, etc. Better to just hit shift, control, right arrow and it highlights and then I can copy it and then shift, command, down arrow and it highlights the rest of the paragraph. I can also do shift, option arrow and it'll highlight one word at a time. Super, super useful. I can do that backward as well. 90% of the time that most people spend on their computer is spent inside of their browser. I happen to choose Chrome. Many people choose Safari or other browsers. I recommend Chrome, but it's up to you. Most browser experiences start with a Google search. So let's say I wanna search, you know, how to use Speechify. Cool. There's a lot of content about Speechify. If I wanna open this link, I will command click the link. Some people right click and then click open a new tab. Command click is the best. And I'll typically open a couple of links and then I go to those links by hitting option, command, right arrow. And it lets me jump there. And it's the nicest thing in the world. By the way, in order to navigate your tabs, if I wanna to go to this tab in the front, command one. This tab, command two. This tab, command three. If I wanna to go to the last tab, command nine. Uh, let's say I wanna open a new tab inside of Chrome, command T. Let's say I accidentally delete this very important tab, Command W, I can bring it back by hitting Command Shift T. Another thing to know is if I wanna get my cursor into here, I click Command L and then I can make a new search if I want to. Okay, this is like super, super important. Um, if I have multiple applications open, I never use my mouse to switch between them and like move this window to find the next window. That's like very, very inefficient. The way to do it is you click Command Tab and it shows you all the applications that are currently open in your computer. So let's say I wanna switch from Chrome to Slack. I click Command Tab, I hold Command, and then I release Command to take me to Slack. I hit Command Tab again to go back to Chrome. If I wanna skip it and go to Finder, I just do that three times. Let's say I'm inside of a window that has many windows. So I'll open, you know, a bunch of Finder windows. The way that I jump between windows with the same application, instead of using Command Tab, I'll use Command Tilde. Command Tilde is amazing because especially if you have a lot of Chrome windows or a lot of Safari windows or a lot of Word documents, it just makes it really, really easy to navigate. Command W to close it, Command W to close it, Command W to close it. So those are the keyboard shortcuts I wanna make sure that you know. There's a couple of Mac apps and Chrome extensions that I could not live without, and here they are. The first one is Flycat. Flycat gives me an unlimited amount of positions in my clipboard. What does that mean? I can copy up to 100 things and they'll still be in my clipboard. Let's say I want to copy this and I also want to quiet speech fine. Let's say I want to copy this and I want to copy this and I want to copy this and then I want to paste them. Um, so I paste the first thing in my clipboard, but ah, that's not what I meant. Plus I want to do the formatting correctly. Now, if I want to bring something back that I copied in the past, uh, my keyboard shortcut for Flycut is Command G, but most people have it as Command Shift V. Um, I can use the arrow key to go backwards as much as I want and pick up something from the past. How cool is that? Other than Flycut, I use Flux. Beautiful thing about Flux is I use the computer pretty late at night sometimes, and I use Flux to modulate the blue light that comes out of the screen. 
So in the beginning of the day, it's pretty nice, but as it gets later and later, it reduces the amount of blue light and it makes sure my eyes stay happy. After Flux, the thing that I can't live without is Adblock. Most people should have Adblock already installed on your computer. If you don't, you should do it. It's a really phenomenal Chrome extension. Now here's the cool thing to know about Adblock. Uh, let's say I wanna go to YouTube, by the way, tab to search directly into YouTube before even entering YouTube. I have YouTube configured through Adblock so that the main page of YouTube doesn't even load. How great is that? That means that I can't get distracted. I can only get to something by searching for that thing directly. Really, really useful. Let's say I'm on YouTube and I'm watching a video. Feel behind it. The suggestions don't even come up. I've blocked them with that block. How great is that? So the way to do that is let's say I wanna delete the comment section permanently from YouTube for myself. Right click the comment section, add block, block this ad and then I select the div in HTML that I wanna remove. Looks good, and it get removed. Now, to access and change that, you click on Add Block, click Settings, and then go to Customize, and you can update what HTML divs you have removed. I did a whole video on this, so if you go Cliff Weitzman Ad Block YouTube, you'll find a video from when I was much younger where I explain how to remove the suggestions on YouTube. So check that out if you wanna use Adblock like a pro. The other Chrome extension that I can't live without is a thing called Speechify. If you download Speechify, that'll really change your life. So let me just quickly show you how I use Speechify. Let's say I wanna to listen to this article. I just click play. My top productivity tools. How I get double the work done and have the time and tools that simply improve my life. Mac apps, Black apps gives you a copy, paste the board of a All right, I'm gonna pause for a second. Um, if I want to change the speed, I can go here. Up to 100 slots and formats. Formats and text formatting wherever it is. Let's say I want to change the voice. My name is Nate. Okay, I have Nate. an English voice from United's cool. control pigments on your screen so that your screen mimics the changes in the sun during the day. Well, that's amazing. One thing I'm going to show is how to use speech for email. So we go to Gmail. Morning Brew. Click play. Click here to let us know that you're still an active subscriber. Thanks. Okay, sounds great. Now, let's say I wanted to respond to this email. And I wanted to say, hi, Mr. and Ms. Thursley of number for private drive, we're proud to say that. Hi, Mr. 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 Number four, drive. We're proud to say that. And let's say I wanted to read this with Speechify. I can triple click it, right click, and then Speechify. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Grisley of number four, private drive. We're proud to say that. Now, I heard it say private instead of privet, and then where instead of were. I could hear the difference. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Grisley of number four, private drive. We're proud to say that. Amazing. That's how you use Speechify inside your email as well. So, so nice. This is a lot of information. And it's okay if you don't start using all these shortcuts all at once. I built the ability to use these over years of muscle memory and practice. I know for a fact that if you dedicate yourself to learning these shortcuts, it'll make your life, especially when you use a computer, a lot more enjoyable and quick. If you found this helpful, please share it with a friend, especially someone who wants to be more efficient with their work and more productive. Even people who are struggling with being bored at their work, if you learn how to use your computer fast, you won't be bored. If you enjoy this content, please be sure to click below to subscribe for more. And as always, enjoy your listening.